Today we'll be revisiting our good old friend Brightside. It's been a while since we reviewed a Brightside video, so enjoy. Mega Neuropsis was a giant dragonfly that lived on our planet almost 300 million years ago. More specifically, it lived in the Artinskian age of the Permian period. It was about the size of a modern day falcon with a wingspan as long as your leg. And yet, you just placed the leg on top of the Mega Neuropsis. That is not how you measure the Mega Neuropsis's wingspan. You're supposed to put the leg on the side, make it lay down like horizontally. It had long and sharp claws that it used to catch food. Doesn't mean they look like this, because this reminds me of some sort of, I don't know, Jurassic Park raptor or something. And for protection, they could even grab small animals and carry them through the air. Their speed and maneuverability made them formidable hunters. Mega Neuropsis is the most giant insect ever found on Earth. Scientists believe it might have reached this colossal size because there used to be more oxygen in the air. There were other gigantic insects that lived before the dinosaurs, too. So far, I can give Brightside some credit. At least the, this part over here is legitimate because Mega Neuropsis lived before the dinosaurs. Some ancient ants could grow to the size of a hummingbird. And if that wasn't scary enough, they could also spit acid, like something out of a movie. This part is not legit because ants only lived around one for 100 million years now, which is in the early Cretaceous. Non-avian dinosaurs still roamed the earth. These ants lived in large colonies and their anthills were several times bigger than the ones we see today and could resemble a bear's den. This thing is an Arthropleura. This is the Arthropleura, and it is definitely not an ant. An ancient ancestor of the giant millipede. This monster dwarf. Stop calling these animals monsters. They're just animals. Don't demonize them. The last two animals growing to the length of a car. From what I've heard of, an average car is like four meters long. Arthropleura is shorter than that. It lived in rainforests, and it could move at great speed. Imagine being chased by one of these. Fortunately, Arthropleura weren't carnivores like today's centipedes. You're saying fortunately as if you're saying that carnivores are absolute menaces and herbivores are trash. They only ate plants. Another reason the insects grew so big back then is that there was less direct competition. They could evolve and grow without being eaten by more successful animals. This is just a caterpillar forming into a chrysalis, undergoing metamorphosis. Bronto Scorpio lived about 400 million years ago. It lived 416 to 412.3 million years ago, to be more specific. I guess 400 million years ago is fine, maybe. And could reach three feet in length. Three feet doesn't mean one meter. It's just 91.5 centimeters. That's 15 times longer than modern scorpions. And unlike modern ones, it had not two, but four claws. I don't think there's a paper that says Bronto Scorpio has four claws. So... This one, this claim is just ridiculous. This amazing creature could also breathe on land. I thought you were going to call it a monster. The fact that you call an Arthropora a monster, th this is just double standards. And underwater. That's because it had both gills and lungs. It's believed that these guys were some of the first to evolve and change their habitat from water to land. Now, onto a far stranger marine animal. Anomalocaris. Anomalocaris. This is just very common in all of these paleontology videos. It's thought to be the very first predator to live on our planet. So were predators before that. It was half the length of a human. Their eyes had color vision, and they were likely the most advanced of any living organism half a billion years ago. They used their sharp claws and mouth parts for hunting trilobites, crabs, and sea scorpions. The crabs 
only began to exist in the early Jurassic, while the Eurypterids, aka the sea scorpions, only lived from Ordovician onwards. It's possible that Anomalocaris was what eventually pushed crabs and scorpions onto the land. They might not look very similar, but Anomalocaris was also an ancient ancestor of modern crabs. Dunkleosteus was- It's pronounced Dunkleosteus, not Dunkleosteus. Well, Dunkleosteus is not horrible, but like, just say it as Dunkleosteus. It's an enormous ancient fish. These guys were half the length of a school bus. Which is potentially outdated. And weighed the same as a small car. They had no teeth, but evolved to use the bone plates on their jaws as a replacement, leading to their crazy appearance. This allowed them to have the biting power of a modern Mississippi alligator. Most impressively, it could close its jaw multiple times in less than a second. Why is this sound so just goofy? It's just completely insane. This created a powerful flow of water right into its mouth. Smaller fish would get caught in the current and pulled right into a Dunkleosteus's mouth. This is not how it hunts, by the way. It just hunts. It does not create a whirlpool of any sort. Their skull was heavily protected by bony armor. It was like it was wearing a helmet. This protected it from almost any strikes and made it the apex predator of its time. Achmonisteon is the ancestor of all sharks in existence, living around 340 million years ago. No one knows why, but in addition to the usual shark fin, it had something that looked like an anvil. Therefore, it is quite similar to the Stethacanthus on its back. Another feature of the Achmonisteon was a massive spike on the underside of its body. It was very sharp and covered with many teeth. Tiktaalik were some of the first animals to set foot on land. It had gills. Okay, so this is definitely not Tiktaalik. All right, this is a full-fledged lizard. And scales, like a fish, but it also had some of the features of land animals. It looked a bit like a cross between a fish and a lizard. Its front and back fins began to turn into limbs, so it could crawl along shorelines. I don't think Brightside's animation showcases the correct evolution of the Tiktaalik. And it developed lungs as it spent more time out of the water. This weird fish may be the ancestor of pretty much every modern land animal today, including us. Back to land, this is a dimetrodon. It looks like a lizard, but it's actually a synapsid. Okay, at the very least, right side did not say that a dimetrodon was a dinosaur, because if it's that case, then the, dimetro then the dimetrodon is just gonna cry in the corner, because right side just keeps on just misclassifying these guys. Well, I don't think they misclassify this stuff a lot. To, to Brightside's credit. A close relative of mammals. The thing is, synapsids include mammals. It was the size of an alligator and had a giant sail on its back. Scientists aren't certain, but it's believed that the Dimetrodon used this sail to get heat from the environment faster. Thermo regulation that that is what you were trying to say it also helped them camouflage themselves in the tall grass these guys are often confused with dinosaurs but they disappeared 40 million years before the first dinosaurs appeared which is i guess it is correct acceptable i guess but the t-rex was not the first dinosaur that appeared it was one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to have ever existed over time, synapsids evolved into full-fledged mammals. And if we go further down this chain, we'll find out that humans evolved from these guys too. Dinocephalians. The name of these guys literally translates to scary-headed. This is because in the process of evolution, their skulls became much thicker. These creatures were usually 19 feet long. No, even though they were generally long, they, some of them were just 15 feet long, 4.5 meters long. And these are the longest ones. And weighed the same as a car. Some of them had long fangs like a saber-toothed tiger. And of course, Brightside just calling them saber-toothed tiger for no reason. But these giant lizards were herbivores. 
That doesn't mean that they were completely peaceful and docile, though. As if you're saying that any animal is peaceful and docile. Well, for, especially for herbivores, that is the legit opposite of the case. Scientists believe they fought within their species. They smashed their heavy foreheads into each other, like rams do now. Dinocephalians existed at a time when all our continents were still connected in a supercontinent called Pangaea. This is not how Pangaea looked. I guarantee you, if you search up Pangaea, you will definitely see the Pangaea supercontinent, how it looked. Gorgonopsia looked a little like Dinocephalians. Only these guys were carnivores. Some dinocephalians were carnivores too. They were about the size of a wolf, but they spent a lot of time in water too. They usually lived on coastlines and could dive into the sea looking for food. They were also the first predators that could run fast. This is one reason why Gorgonopsia ruled the world about 265 million years ago. But now you're just showing dinosaurs from different periods. I can see Stegosaurus and Brachiosaurus, uh, supposedly Brachiosaurus anyway, it looks more like a giraffe or titan, that, and then there's the Triceratops, which lives in a completely different period from the Stegosaurus and giraffe or titan. Later, these species mysteriously disappeared, leaving the dinosaurs to dominate the earth. They didn't mysteriously disappear. They went extinct in the Permian-Triassic extinction event. The cause of the mass extinction about 240 million years ago 251.9 million years ago is unknown. But the second event that caused the extinction of 95% of all living organisms on Earth was a giant meteorite. If you're talking about the KPG extinction event, then yes, the asteroid caused the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs, but you're talking about 96% of all life that went extinct. That is... The KPG extinction event was not that severe. The Great Dying, aka the Permian Triassic extinction event, was actually that severe. In that case, it'd be incorrect. We still don't know the precise cause of the Great Dying. The scientific consensus, though, is that the main cause of extinction was the flood basalt volcanic eruptions that created the Siberian traps, which released sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide, resulting in Eugenia elevating global temperatures and acidifying the oceans. The oldest tree remains are 385 million years old. Archaeologists found them inside a rock, where there were traces of the roots of many species of trees. These ancient trees evolved and began to turn the carbon dioxide in the air into oxygen. Gradually, they created the atmosphere we have now. This is the oldest winged insect in the world, Rhine Agnatha. It's about 400 million years old, and there's still debate about the way it lived. Supposedly, it fed on plants, but it also might have eaten other animals. The oldest species of millipede is Pneumodesmus. Okay, so it is one of the first myriapods and among the oldest creatures to have lived on land. Pneumani. It may have been the first living organism to breathe. No, the fish that lived in the Cambrian also breathed oxygen in the water. On the barren earth, around 400 million years ago, on the barren earth. What do you mean by on the barren earth? This little guy was only as long as a seed, but we only have one fossil, so they might have grown a bit bigger. Pneumodesmus might be a distant relative of all the millipedes and centipedes that exist today. It is a myriapod, which includes millipedes and centipedes. The farther we go back in time, the more bizarre the living organisms look. 480 million years ago, Aegirocassus coasted through the ocean. For its time, it was the largest animal on the planet. Which is correct, and we're also getting on topic of the video. So, this video from right side isn't very bad. Reaching 6.6 .6 feet in length. Fortunately for other sea creatures, it wasn't a scary hunter. It ate the same way that the blue whale does today swallowing loads of water so it could catch all the tiny things living in it. Dickinsonia lived 550 million years ago. This thing lived in the late Ediacaran 567 to 550 million years ago. These floating ovals varied a lot in size. Some could be the size of a fingernail, 
while other species were as big as a kitchen plate. These specimens found range from a few milliliters to about 1.4 meters in length and from a fraction of a millimeter to a few millimeters thick. The largest Dickinsonia may have been as wide as a stingray. These animals are so primitive that they didn't even have a skeleton. Some scientists thought it wasn't even an animal, but a fungus. But that was later disproven. Any Karen animals are just incredibly weird. That's what happens, like, just 100 million years after the animals first existed during the cryogenian period 665 million years ago. Charnia was another animal that scientists originally thought was a plant. To be fair, plantae, the plants, existed from the Mesoproterozoic onwards. They believed that it was just the leaf of something like a fern. They realized that it was an animal when it was found that Charnia lived deep underwater, where photosynthesis is impossible. These guys swam near the bottom of the sea and fed on nutrients from the water. Instead of a traditional digestive system, these things had filters. They ran water through them to catch food in it, like the Ajiro Cassis. Man, Edia Karen animals are just incredibly obscure to me, and I, I think I want to learn a bit more about them after watching Brightside's video, actually. The first living organism is thought to have appeared about 4.2 billion years ago. When the oceans first formed, they were filled with things needed for life to exist. Under high temperatures, this matter began to interact and join together, forming the first living organism. This is why we look for planets with liquid water. We know life on Earth started with water, so many people believe that water is the most important factor in the origin of life. This is how the video ends. So, this, this video isn't exactly horrible, especially when it comes to bright side, but like, still not particularly amazing with some ridiculous statements here and there. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you all next time. <laughs>